so if you are getting ready for the USMLE step one and um, or you are already preparing for the step one um, there are many resources out there um, we have uh, U World um, First Aid uh, Pathoma. We have Ambos RX Med Bullets. We have Kaplan. Um, we have Anki. We have uh, Sketchy, and all these resources are very great. Everybody and what works for them. Um, the main ones that you want to go with are those here. Um, we have the First Aid over here, and then we have Pathoma, and then the U World. With these combinations, you are likely to ace the US MLE. But then. Um, many students um, find it difficult at the beginning of their prep and we waste so much time um, before we discover how to use these uh, resources. Uh, in this video, um, I've put together some common mistakes that um, we do as students and this should help you to avoid these mistakes um, uh, at the very uh, beginning of your prep so that um, you don't waste um, time um, on these mistakes so um this channel is meant to help any student any average student to be able to um, avoid um, um, certain mistakes and also to be able to learn smart quick and very efficient um, in a build up to the step one usmle so if you haven't subscribed to this channel please um, do so and also take time to go through our previous videos and then you will see um, that we have some great contents so subscribe and then click the notification button also leave your comments for us and, um, and let me also know um, what videos that you want us um, to do um, i'm not going to waste so much time on this video um, so first of all let's look at the first resource that um, we'll be talking about so the first resource that we'll be talking about is um, this very one um, which is the first aid so with this first aid um, there are several mistakes that uh, we make um, during uh, doing this first aid and um, I'm going to talk about a few of them over here so that if you are able to avoid these mistakes um, it, it will really go a long way to to help you um, the first mistake is that um, you don't want to start first aid uh, too early in your prep and then you don't want to start it too late um what do i mean by too early uh, somebody may say hey first aid is the tool that uh, we all use so you have to start it too very early so for example um when you start the us early and you don't know what it's about and you start reading first aid you can read the whole first aid and you know nothing like you cannot retain any information you have to find a balance between when to start the first aid so you want to start it with other resources you want to do your investigation very well as to how to use the first aid and also how to avoid making uh, mistakes so you don't just get up and then start reading only first aid from day one you'll finish read it for six months and you cannot apply it so you have to find that balance um, another mistake that students do is that they use the first aid as their only resource so assuming like um, you are a student and you start doing only uh, first aid it's not going to help you because a first aid summarizes information um, what they do is that they have summarized all the six years of med, uh, med school curriculum that we need to know and and then they put they compress everything so you really need to be able to decode those information using other books so for example your med school notes are able to decode those information so from day one you want to take your med school notes uh, very serious or lectures you have to take them very serious and now when you come back to the first aid you will be able to see those information that are compressed and the first aid gives you a guide as to how to proceed in your studies so do not use the first aid as the primary tool you need to combine with other resources if you're doing first aid you're reading first and you don't understand something go back to lecture notes there are several lecture notes out there that you can use as lecture videos come to youtube and other uh, lecture uh, um, other, um, lecture lectures that you can use in combination so don't just read it like that um the next thing is 
don't don't read it in isolation don't read first aid in isolation don't take only first aid and read only first aid you need to combine it with things like bnb so i recommend bnb because um in um in the bnb lectures you realize that uh, for some of them he goes according to the first aid page by page some are even word for word so you want to open your first aid and then you open the BNB lecture on your laptop and then you follow it. And then he will say certain things that are not in the first aid. You want to make annotations. And then when he also finishes, you realize that um, um, he will also do some, uh, give some questions. So his Q banks are relatively hard. I, I wouldn't advise you to um, waste so much time on BNB Q banks. Um, the next thing is that do not keep your first aid clean because nobody's going to inspect it. So um, by, by that, I mean, you have to do annotations. And the best thing is that um, you want to buy the book is, is, is the, the recommendation, buy the book, do the, the PDF and all those things are not the best because assuming that I'm doing PDF, the information will be in the PDF in the computer. Even if I do annotations, it will be inside the computer. And I'm not going to see them like very often unless I'm looking for the information. But when I have the the book, what happens that even if I'm looking for uh, maybe something else and I'm opening to that page, I will come across another thing. I'll be able to come across other things. My, as I open the book, my eyes um, just glance through and I'll see other things that um, I would have not looked for if I'm using the PDF because I think the PDF is more of a um, not too smart way of using the first aid. So you want to make a lot of annotations. If you look into my book, um, you, you see a lot of annotations in there. You don't want to make too many annotations. You're not repeating the book. Some people make so, uh, too many annotations in the first aid and it's not helpful because it will just look like you're repeating the book. Like you're, whatever is written in the book, you're just rewriting it in the first aid and it's not the best. So just do as little annotations as possible. Um, some of them you don't have to write, just circle the information. And then um, I'll do a video on how to annotate um, in the first aid. Uh, for some of them, you just want to write the source of the information so that you always know that oh um you world has ever asked this question um uh, nbme has ever asked this uh, concept and then that helps you um let's move on the next thing that you want to do is um you don't want to copy information from the first aid so for example um some people will have a, a separate notebook like this you have a separate notebook then anything you see in the in the first aid you are transferring it into this book like it's not a smart way of studying um it means that you're just recopying um, information from the first aid and this is not helpful it's never helpful so you want to avoid that yeah it, it's it's okay to have a notebook but you don't want to copy everything that has been written already once it's written it's written don't recopy it you are just reproducing the book and that is not very smart um, way of studying um so now um with the annotation we said do not annotate too much you have to use it with the first aid you also want to use it with pathoma so this is what i mean assuming you are doing you know pathoma is mainly pathology so assuming you are do, reading the first aid with b and b in conjunction and then you open your first aid and then let's say you reach G, gi pathology what, what will happen is that you want to when you reach gi pathology you want to open a pathoma as well so that there are topics in the first aid that, path, uh, that pathoma did not talk about there are also topics in the pathoma that first aid did not talk about also there are topics in pathoma that are better explained well they are well explained than in the first aid so you want to open that as well you um, i would advise that you finish first aid and now come and start pathoma no do them in conjunction do them together so when i read gi pathology i'm opening pathoma at the same time and i'm opening first aid at the same time and pathoma does a very great job when it comes to pathology versus b and b so you want to do you want to switch to pathoma when you get to pathology in the first aid and that is a very smart way of optimizing your time um, so these are all for the first aid now let's go to you world so let's see like well, what mistakes do we uh, uh, have to avoid when it comes to um, doing UWorld? The first thing is that prepare your mind. Prepare your mind 
for low scores when you start um, your world. Only few students are able to um, get high scores. And even those students, like it means that from day one of their med school, they were um, they were ready to study for, they already started preparing for um, for the USMLE step one. For some of us, we had to finish the six years before we decided to write the USMLE. So it's a little different for everybody. Uh, so uh, prepare your mind, get your mind ready, tune your mind that even if you get a very low score, it doesn't mean that you are not going to excel on the test day. Um, UWorld helps you to integrate the concepts that you have learned from med school and also teach you new concepts. Yeah, so you will also teach you new concepts. And um, yeah, um, so prepare your mind. Don't feel depressed when you get very low scores on the U world. Um, the next thing is that do not use U world as a learning tool. Sorry, do not use U world as an assessment tool. It's rather a learning tool. You want to use the U world as a learning tool. Um, so if, let's say, you get disappointed in getting low scores versus um, learning what you uh, got wrong then you are going um, focusing on using the world as an assessment tool rather than a learning tool the assessment tool in the world is the world sa so the world sa1 world sa2 they are the assessment tools as for the q bank the over 300 to uh, the 3000 to 4000 questions use them as a learning tool so you want to learn from those questions that that's the purpose of your world that's the purpose of the q bank so you just want to learn from them okay um now the next mistakes that we can avoid um is that we should not rush through your world don't think of rushing through your world especially when you uh, that is your first pass of your world never rush through it never just do questions you want to take time and meticulously like um uh, read every as everything that it asks and then every explanation don't just rush through it understand before you move on understand move on make annotations in the first eight things that are hard for you write them down find them in first aid find explanation to them and that would go a long way to help you um the next thing is um read every incorrect question i mean every like if they give a question and then if the answer is a it does not mean that you don't read option b option c option um, d you want to find out why they are wrong even those incorrect may be a um, maybe a correct answer to a different question um, in another Q bank or on your step or in the, in you all. So you want to read every question whether it's incorrect is correct. If you even got a, if you've got a question a whole question correct, you still want to spend time on um, reading it very well. So you don't just say hey I got this correct so let me move on or this is the answer so let me read only the answer and ignore, ignore the rest read everything and even read this uh, the learning objectives below um, the explanation um, the next thing is that uh, next mistake that people do is like not linking the u world to first aid and also not annotate so for example um, you um, somebody learns you world and then when it's you world they don't link it to the first aid you want to extract information from the first aid and you world at the same time so when you see any information in first aid and then you can link it to what is in you world and its explanation it really helps you and um, so that um, the first aid compresses the information but you world is going to give you the meaning of that compressed information and that really helps yeah um so this are some few things um um you also don't want to prioritize uh, the percentage that you got you, you you get on um the daily uh, the assessments or is the assessment like the, the daily test that you will test that you you take you don't want to prioritize the score that you get over um over the concepts that you are learning you rather want to appreciate in concept building than the percentage that you are getting in you world and at the end of the day you will see that your scores will just um, improve so first of all when you start your world go after the concepts and try to remember the concept why are they asking this question why should it be asked and how should i approach it then 
find a way to remember it if you have to link it to something you've heard before if you have to link it to a body part if you have to link it to a name you've heard before you just find a way to remember it i am in you in, in the beginning of your uh, prep um now let's look at pathoma so um in pathoma uh, for pathoma yes uh, there are a lot of mistakes also that um people do when it comes to pathoma so um few of them is um, that do not take notes into another book for example um i showed you um for example you are doing pathoma and then now you take pathoma and um like you take your own notebook and start writing like everything <laughs> uh, pathoma is saying dr satara like whatever he's saying you are rewriting it into another notebook like it's not smart like yeah it's not smart you shouldn't be rewriting like everything from pathoma into another notebook that means that you are creating another pathoma it means at the end of the lecture if you do all these and you copy them into this book at the end of the day you have two pathoma books no that is not a smart way so you just want to do um, annotations in the pathoma book itself you do annotations in the book if you can see and uh, for whatever you don't understand you can uh, circle them so you see some annotations on the side here and make annotations on the side here as well that's and then make, do and un underline things and circle some of them and that better helps you to optimize your time the next mistake that people do is to wait until um, dedicated or to wait until the last month of their prep before they do the first three chapters of pathoma i will say no do it as early as possible so that you can apply those information several times in the various cue banks that you will do before um, you go for the step that that helps you to um, get so comfy with um, those information you apply them several times and now it becomes part of you you don't you don't panic when you see concepts so do first three or sometimes the first four chapters of pathoma very early in your prep um Another mistake that people do is that um, they do not do, I talked about that earlier, they don't do pathoma and first aid together. You will, but anytime you're doing first aid and let's say for you're doing cardio and when you reach cardiopathology, you want to merge first aid with pathoma. You don't do them separately and, um, and that helps you to optimize your time also. Do not ignore pathoma images. So. Uh, for some people, at the, um, when they start their first pass of pathoma, um, they don't pay attention to the images in pathoma. So you realize that Dr. Sata did a very great job over here by putting images. images. So once you, you, you pay very close attention to these images, you see them here. If you can see these images below here, every page has some images. So you want to pay attention to them at the beginning of your studies so that you um, get used to them. The images are very, very important. They are easy points to get on your, your step. So don't ignore the images. Learn them in your first pass and then apply them. Try to remember them. That pictorial memory repeats several times and then you'll be... Um, you'll be good at the images as well. So do not ignore the images. Try to remember the images as well. So um, these are for um, uh, Pathoma. Now I can touch a little bit on Bots and Beyond as well. So for Bots and Beyond, um, it's very good. I already said add it to um, your uh, first aid when you are doing first aid. But one is th there are certain topics that, frankly, I can say... Uh, boss and beyond did not do very well for example you don't want to waste time doing um, boss and uh, beyond biochemistry no because um, I, I i i really uh, i i saw what he did and i also see what dr najib d does uh, and so um i will say if you are somebody who is weak if, if you have no foundation in um, biochemistry do not do boss and you don't even waste time on it go and do dr najib because Dr. Najib is that person, that, that doctor, that he can even teach my grandmother in the village who has never done, um, uh, who has never been to school. Dr. Najib, the way he lectures, I believe that he can lecture anybody like to understand biochemistry. So um, most students say, oh, Dr. Najib, like he wastes time, he is too slow. No, you can increase the speed of 
um, of the videos that's one but if you're also someone who has no foundation in biochemistry you don't want to increase the speed spend one week with dr najib it's better to spend one week with dr najib versus versus waiting to the end of your studies and or your prep or dedicated and realize that your uh, biochemistry is poor so at the beginning of your prep if you have weak foundation in biochem go straight to dr najib and spend some time with him and then if it's one week you make some notes and then dr najib will really help you to be able to integrate all the metabolic and catabolic pathways and that will help you to improve your scores in uh, biochemistry because biochemistry is not by memorization you have to understand what is going on and if you understand what is going on you can easily tell the enzymes that are deficient or that are needed or the vitamins or anything the cofactors so yeah um so i would say for um biochemistry for bnb do not waste time bnb does a very great job in all other systems maybe um genetics is also a little bit not the best in the bnb um genetics in first aid i'll say is enough first aid genetics is enough if you can really read it and memorize it then you will be good but if you have any other topic in the genetics that you're not uh, really good at find other resources and yeah um we can also talk a little bit about the usmle rx so um it's also a great resource uh, people say that the rx is just a repetition of first aid like they ask information directly from first aid yes they do that but yeah there is a, a way that you can also get the best out of rx so with rx after doing u world and then you did ambos and your scores are still not improving what you want to do is you want to use rx so first of all you go to um rx and do rx sa1 after doing rx sa1 you realize that you will get some um some greens and some reds and some yellows meaning that the greens are those that you are very good at like you uh, you passed um 70 percent the yellows you are below 70 percent and then the red you realize that you are very low so you want to now do rx questions on the reds and the yellows so you can decide to ignore the greens because you're already strong in those areas but then you after you want to do rx so you can decide to do thousand questions or all the questions in rx q bank on the areas that you did not perform well on the rx sa and that is a smart way of using the rx you don't have to do all the all the q bank yeah so these are some of the mistakes that students do um so if you haven't subscribed to this video please um subscribe to this video so that um, we can uh, bring more uh, more quality content to you um if you also have any suggestions put it in the comment box and all your questions are welcome thank you so much and i pray that you will excel in your exam hey it's doable the exams is doable i want you to know that it's doable and if i can do it and other med students can also do it you can also do it it's about consistency persistency and patience you will go far thank you